Welcome aboard the Boat Buyers Secret Weapon Podcast, where we're dedicated to helping first-time and experienced boat buyers find the right boat at the best price, so they have years and years of boating fun, because life truly is better on a boat. Today's podcast is sponsored by the Boat Buyers Secret Weapon YouTube channel. Don't pay too much for your next boat. Just visit BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash save to watch a short video. Now, let's hop aboard and have some fun. Welcome to the Boat Buyers Secret Weapon video series. I'm your host, Captain Matt, and today we are talking about the state of the boating market. Uh, I've changed it from the COVID update to just the boat buying market because COVID is, is a player, but there are a lot of other things going on in the industry, and um, I, I think this is something that I'm going to continue to do on maybe a quarterly basis. So uh, if you haven't watched these videos before, give me an update of what the inventory levels look like, predictions in production, uh, supply chain situation, ordered boat opportunities, the used boat inventory and COVID scams uh, are just scams, suggestions, warnings, and then some more predictions. So. Um, Right now, I'm recording this on July 21st. Uh, it is so it's the end of July, which traditionally in the boat market is they're they're selling pretty strong till Fourth of July. It kind of starts to slow down until Labor Day in most of the country, uh, and then as, as Labor Day hits, the market changes from um, you know bow riders, pontoons to some more cruisers, uh, some aluminum fishing boats are still selling pretty well, and at the coast and then the warmer clients, climates, um, and I just, I had a dentist appointment, so my my mouth isn't 100% unnumb right now, so if I slur a little bit, I apologize, that's what it is. Um, so there, there's some other markets that continue to sell past Labor Day, um, depending on the warm weather and things like that. And I'm talking North America here. Uh, but after Labor Day, it really starts to slow down. Now, we didn't see that in 2020. Um, it, the sales just continued on uh, in through December, even in the colder climate. So here's what we saw in from 2020 to 2021. Um Year-over-year -year growth rates on the boat segments, the main power boat segments, which I talk about, 38% increase uh, in unit sales. In pontoons, it was almost 58%. In uh, bow riders and deck boats, almost 40%. Uh, yachts were up 11%. Um, uh, aluminum fishing boats were up 26%. But here's what's interesting. In May... May 20 to May 21, uh, May 2020, we had huge volume. Uh, things were, were really kicking off. People got nervous in March, April, sales started picking up. May, they really started going. So May was a huge year, um, but May of 2021, we're still riding that trend, but we're only up 6.7% in pontoons. Overall, in the powerboat segment, only up 2.3%. So what's going on, and how does it impact you as a boat shopper? This is on the new side, and um, you can see that uh, the total industry, electric houseboats, uh, personal watercraft, uh, personal watercrafts were up 45% year over year, but actually down 23% from May 2020 to May 2021, comparing month to month, um, so that it's it's interesting. So that what what we're seeing is it's a lot of different things going on. What does the industry itself look like? This is a um, an industry survey. What are your outlooks as the as an industry dealership owner, general manager? What's your outlook for the marketplace uh, going forward? The current condition. Well, you can see April. It skyrocketed up. Everybody was scared in March. Boom, April it went up. May it shot up. And then we've been up. We had a little dip down, and now it's back up again. It's been down and up. That's the current conditions. How are things going right now? The three to five year outlook is the blue line. You can see shot up as we hit, uh, got through the pandemic, dropped back down, back up, back down, back up, back up. So it's the dealership principles 
are positive, optimistic, and yet month to month, they're not really sure what's going to happen. How is this all going to play out? So what do we see in new boat trends? So these are actually sales from 2014 on. You can see that big dip in March um, kind of stepped up a little bit in April. And then, boom, we shot through the roof, dropped back down a little bit as we as we hit the, um, uh, the colder months, um, shot back up again. And then you can see it starting to drop back down. So these are the actual sales. What are you seeing in sales? So sales are still the marketplace over 60, 70% of the people surveyed said, hey, our, our sales are way up. Um, they're way up high. And you're seeing the same thing in reverse on the inventory level. So dealer sales are through the roof. What's happened to the inventory level? Well, everybody in, in two, late 2019 uh, were nervous. Hey, inventory levels are getting high. Um, we're expecting a slowdown. Um, the, the industry was nervous. They were starting to say, all right, we might have a contraction coming up here. We might need to scale some things back. Well, COVID hit, boom, inventory dropped to the floor. Now, 80, 90% of the dealers are saying, I don't have enough inventory, new boat inventory to sell. And you can see as we hit January 2021, it dropped down even more. <laughs> in, in the current update, 100% of the dealer survey said, I don't have enough inventory to sell. And I'll tell you some stories about uh, some dealership owners um, that I've talked to and what they have to say. So that's kind of the macro level. Some other things going on in the industry that are interesting is the exports are down sharply. Now, we don't export we don't export a lot of boats in the U.S. We don't export a lot of anything. But the exports were down. Um, Canada, Europe, Mexico, uh, with Canada being the, the biggest, the tariffs, there's some things going on there. It also has to do with, hey, we can barely meet the demand of the U.S. market. So this was from July 6, 2021. Um, but those exports have gone down a little bit. Um, which is something to, to kind of keep an eye on. And then product shortages, there's product shortages across the board. We'll talk about that. Where are they? Well, can't, boats are being shipped with canvas covers. I ordered a new boat in November. It's finally showing up here in June, July, but it doesn't have a cover. Uh, my boat's sitting on the lot in the dealer. I can't get a motor. Um, I can't get the trailer that I want. I've got to take a different trailer um, that may be more or less than, than what I had ordered, um, and there's shortages there. The foam, coming, most of the foam, I guess, in the U.S. comes from Texas, um, and there's huge shortages because of the flooding uh, and the weather, the, the freezing, and the, what hit them a year plus ago. Um, lumber, uh, if you've built anything, if you've done any home improvement projects, you know, those prices are through the roof, although they're settling back down. Yamaha's coming in to the country. The CEO of Yamaha did a video uh, about maybe a month, two months ago, um, talking about their supply chain issues. Um, a lot of the boats sitting ready to go, except for the motor, um, are looking to put Yamahas on them. And they, they said, hey, we just don't know. We'll talk about why that is. Components, um, you know, their components in the boating industry, there's only new boats, you know, 310,000 boats built um, in 2020, uh, which was up 12% from the previous year. And those so those component parts, they just don't make a lot of them. And when those supply chain issues hit, um, the, you know, the just-in-time inventory, they used what they had in the manufacturers, then they were waiting for it to come in, and, and they're seeing some delays there. The delays are coming from a couple different things. One, can't get the raw material. Don't have the labor force to put these things together on the component side. But another one is, this is Yamaha's, um, we can't find shipping containers to ship our product from um, where it's manufactured to the States and the ports are 
overflowing. So the ports are stacked up and these these shipping these ships are waiting to get into the port to be unloaded and they're just hanging off the coast of LA uh, or coast of California. Uh, they're hanging off the, the west coast, the east coast, and they're backed up 20, 30 days. And another thing that's happened is in these shipping ports, it used to be eighteen to twenty five hundred dollars per container um, as an import fee. Well now are the cost to import it. Now, the pricing, because they're so backed up, because there's such a backlog, there's a shortage of shipping containers, the prices have gone up to 20000 per container. And what's happening is nobody knows where those prices are going to go. So when you order something, they say, okay, Here's what we think it's going to be, but we can't lock that in for you. Um, you can place your order. We'll know 30 days, 15 days prior to shipping what that's going to be. And then you can decide whether you want that product or not. So $1,800 to $2,500 per shipping container to $20,000 to we don't know where that's going to go in the future it is where some of those component parts engine parts that are being manufactured overseas and being shipped into the country is causing a huge issue and raising of prices. So, so the cost of everything is going up considerably. So we've talked about all the issues. So what's the reality on the streets? Well, this is the dealership I used to sell for. I stopped by and, and talked to the owner um, who's been in the industry for 50 years. His dad started the business back in the 70s. Um, talked to the, and they've got six different um, dealerships uh, in the Mid-Atlantic. And I was talking to Jeff and he said, listen, you know, this showroom, this is their showroom. They've got one boat in there, a uh, uh, what was a 40 foot uh, C Ray SLX? Um, this usually has 10 boats in it. And he said, in all six of our locations, we don't have any boats. We have over 150 on order that are sold that we're just waiting for them to be built and shipped in, but we don't have inventory to sell. If you've been shopping, you know this on the new boat side, you know, you walk into a dealer, there's nothing to look at. Um, so what's happening is the manufacturers are building as fast as they can. They're increasing their capacity. They're building new factories. Um, they're trying to hire more workers, but it takes a skilled worker to build a boat uh, because it's not automated uh, as much as you may think. We can go watch the, the boating industry, um, how boats aren't like cars or something like that on the channel to get more into that. So there's this dealer saying, we can't get enough inventory. We are way low. Their showrooms are empty. This time of year, they're, they're trying to get rid of their inventory so they can hit about 25% of their inventory uh, in stock in, in Labor Day or so. Um, they can start building it up. They still have some boats to sell as the season slows down, but they start building their inventory up as they come to boat show season in the fall or the winter, depending on their area. And then they've got their full level of inventory, hopefully come February, February, March. <laughs> Sorry, my, my lips still aren't hundred percent working. Um, so here's what I see happening is because these dealers have zero inventory and the manufacturers, the boats that they're building are all sold. And we're in July, 2021. Well, it's going to take them, through five, six months to continue to build the customer order boats. And then they still have to do a full year of production to fill these dealerships inventory back up to where they typically are. So that tells me that in the marketplace, we're going to see this weird situation at least into 2023 models. So if you're thinking, I'm not going to order a boat because I think prices are going to come way down um, and I think there's going to be a, a bunch of inventory available um, next year, I just, I don't think that's going to be the case. I was at West Marine the other day and this is what their shelves look like. A West Marine that's a half a mile from a, a busy um, lake and they're out of anchors. They're out of wakeboards and skis. They're out of... Um, uh, speakers. They were out of life vest for the most part. Um, I, I, trying to find dock lines. They were just out of 
a bunch of stuff. And it's all the same thing. It's all demand was way up. So people are buying like crazy. Supply chain's all funky right now. Um, they can't get product in from the ports. They can't get product built because the, the raw materials were having issues. So you're seeing it on the parts and accessory and gear and just the boating stuff that's um you know that we boaters love to buy <laughs> why it's a you know 50 billion dollar industry almost and that supply chain's all messed up as well and you know when's that going to start coming back uh, i've been in some shops that they the inventory levels on the shelf looks good uh, but how long is it going to last and where's it going to go i don't know so you've got yamaha products stuck in transit You've got manufacturers trying to build up their capacity so that they can build more boats. You've got labor shortages of skilled labor. You've got the demand is still super, super high. Inventory levels way, way, way low across the board. And now let's turn our, our focus on used boat. So, okay, I can't buy a new boat. Maybe I'll look used. 75% um, of the marketplace sold is used anyway. Um, so, you know, traditionally 25% of the market buys new 75% buys pre-owned of some level. So you're seeing all these used boats come on the market that's raised the used boat prices, as you know, if you're shopping used boats, um, but you're also seeing some sketchy used boats comes on the, coming on the market. It's why we have the first time boat buyer Academy at firsttimeboatbuyer.com. Uh, it's why we offer the toolkit. It's why I create all these videos about how to inspect things because I don't want you to buy that boat that, oh, great, I found a boat. It seemed like a good deal. And then a month later, all of these major issues start coming up and the repair bills come in. And guess what? If you've got to get your boat repaired right now, one, they're at their busy time, so they don't have a lot of capacity. Two, the part that they may need may be not available. You may be six months out to get a little part that you need to fix your boat. Three is you've got a you just spent 10, 15, 20, 100 grand on this new boat that's used but new to you, and now you've got a five, ten, twenty thousand dollar repair bill. So I want you to avoid that. So be careful of those shady boats out there. Um, that, uh, oh man, this is my, I can clean this up and we're good. Watch out for boats that have maybe come for a hurricane area. You're seeing those that somebody, you know, slapped some lipstick on a pig and said, oh, I can sell this. I bought it for 500 bucks at the salvage yards. I can make it look good enough and run good enough to sell it and sell it for 30 grand right now and just stick it to the guy that buys it because they don't know any better. Um, and you're seeing those boats come up from the coast that have been in hurricanes that have had major issues, salvage boats that are being sold in the Midwest where people just aren't thinking that way. That's why I really encourage you to go to Boat History Report before you buy a used boat. Check that history. See where it's coming from. Did it come from the south? Uh, and for whatever reason, it's, it's up being sold in Minnesota now. What's going on? A red flag that says, hey, slow down. Not, not buy the boat, but slow down. And do some double checking, ask some questions, find out what's going on to make sure you don't get stuck with somebody else's problem. Now, the other thing that you're seeing, because there's so much demand and I, I looked at this boat, I put a full price offer on, it was already sold. I looked at this boat, put a full price offer on, it was already sold. And now people get, oh, I'm just going to buy the next thing. And they see this boat that, oh, it's a great deal. $25,000 for this 2018 Monterey 224 FS. That's wow. That's a great deal. Um, I'm going to call them. You start getting an email conversation. They say they usually have some funky story selling it for my mom. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm in the army. Um, I'm in the military and I'm overseas. I'm deployed selling it for my husband. That's deployed. Um, and price is too good to be true. Boat's too good to be true. They won't let you inspect it in person. Somebody's out of town. Uh, they're asking for money uh, to be wired. That's early. They're sending you to an eBay page that says, hey, eBay's all of our transactions are guaranteed. And, you, you know, they do what they can to make you feel good. They send you so, to some phony sites. If you haven't seen the boat, you haven't run the boat, you haven't inspected the boat, and you've only been on email with people, be careful. Red flag, red flag, red flag. 
Again, BoatHistoryReport.com uh, can do a search for you. But if I'm not setting myself on that boat and running it right now, especially right now, and I know that as a, a boater you get ex- or a boat shopper, you get excited and you've lost so many opportunities and the boats that you are lo- fall in love with aren't available anymore, be careful that you don't get too much in a hurry and get taken advantage of, get scammed out of even a couple hundred bucks or a couple thousand bucks or um, 20, 30,000 bucks because it's happening out there because the market's still in a frenzy a year later um, from when I did my first one, still in a frenzy. So who are these people that are buying? Well, 30% of them are first time boat buyers. I think that number is probably ticking up a little bit. Um, 100,000 people bought their first boat in 2020, Um, so there's some first-time boaters. Now, for the people that say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit back and I'm going to buy a boat next year because there's going to be a glut of boats on the marketplace because everybody financed them through the roof. Um, They don't know what's involved in boating. That may be true, but there's some caveats to it. Only 20% of first-time buyers leave the industry in the first two years on average. So that there's more first-time boaters. Um, You know, they, they may leave at a little bit different pace, but here's what's interesting. They only built 12% um, more new boats. They delivered 12% more new boats um, in 2020. So that's only 30,000 extra boats that are on the marketplace across North America. It's not like they doubled production. Um, And and I think people that have that mindset of prices are going to come way down and we're going to have a huge fall real soon within the next 12 months. I don't think that's the case. Now, I do think at some point the prices are going to come down a little bit. Um, but I don't think we're going to see a huge crash. I don't think we're going to see a huge glut on the market till at least 2024. I mean, and, and it seems crazy that I'm saying this because it's not what I was saying six months ago. Um, I, what I'm seeing in the industry of every dealership that I've visited, every every dealer that I've talked to across the country has zero boats. You know, and these are, I usually have 10 boats. Now I've got zero. I usually have 60 boats in inventory. Now I've got five. And and those are gone within days when they come off the truck. Um, Jeff, who I talked to, traditionally has over 250 boats in their their dealer inventory. He said, I've got one here in this location. I've got two at that location, zero at this location. And everything that comes in, is sold within a couple of days when it gets unloaded off the truck, if it's not already sold already. And it's just such an odd thing because you know it's going to take a year of production. That's how long it takes manufacturers to fill back up their dealer networks. So you you have to add at least a year on from today before you get back to normal. And I don't see the way the economy is going, um, the way people are spending money right now. And hey, they put trillion dollars into the marketplace of course the economy is doing well so inflation what are interest rates going to do the housing market's going crazy um what's going to come of this in the next two or three years um that's where i'm looking maybe three years out you see some sort of a weird correction so those are my predictions i'm not an economist um i'm a, a guy that understands boats I'm a guy that understands a little bit about the economy and the finance and the way the industry works. Um, But, you know, I'm no Fed chairman by any means. So I don't know what's going to happen with inflation. I do know what's going to happen with inventory, uh, that manufacturers continue to increase their production level. And that's going to catch up at some point. And at some point, yes, greedy manufacturers are going to overproduce and there's going to be a glut and the market's going to correct. But I think it's two, three, maybe four years out um, because of everything that's going on. And, and I think people are really enjoying getting outside, spending time with the family. And I don't think there's going to be a huge, I'm getting out of boating um, that's happening. On the used boat side, those boats are already out there. And the ones that they put a lipstick on a pig, well, somebody's going to lose their shorts. Don't let it be you. 
Um, that's why you watch this channel. That's why you go to the U.S. Boat Expo. You, you sign up for the First Time Boat Buyer Academy and invest some money so you don't lose thousands of dollars. Um, you invest a little bit so you know what to do, what to look for, how to buy a boat the right way without uh, getting screwed and get the best deal you can right now. Um, but that's, that's the way I see it. So here's my recommendation. Boating, family time memories, relaxation. If you haven't read the book, The Blue Mind, go check it out. It's a great book. Talks about why people are drawn to the water. Smart financial decision? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. But nobody in the history of time has bought a boat because it's a smart financial decision. 20 years ago, buying a boat was not a smart financial decision. Today, buying a boat, not a wise financial investment. It's an investment in your family. It's an investment in your relationship. It's an investment in your health uh, and your well-being and your enjoyment of life. And you should only do it 20 years ago, 30 years ago, today. You should only do it if you can afford it. It fits into your budget, not just the boat, but the boat, the maintenance, the gear, the storage, all the stuff that uh, we talk about in all the other videos in the First Time Boat Buyer Academy. We go into the detail on all that. Um, it's not about a smart financial decision. It's about does it fit into the budget? Does it deliver what we want, which is relationship, memories, relaxation, all that stuff? If that's the case, um, yeah, go ahead and buy a boat right now. Understand you're not going to get the lowest price. Understand that in three, four years, the value of that boat may drop significantly. Um, but if you're spending 50 grand on a boat today, it's not going to be worth $10,000 in five years. It may lose 50% of its value, 40%, 30% of its value. I, I don't know where it's going to go, um, but it's not going to fall out. The marketplace is not going to just bottom out, and now your $50,000 boat is worth $10,000. It may be worth thirty, dollars maybe worth forty. dollars um, I don't know. But if you say, hey, I can spend twenty grand on my family for the relaxation and what we're going to, what we're going to get out of this, then buy the boat. You know, that's, that's the way I look at it. So pre-owned market continue to be high demand, low supply, watch out for those boats, watch out for the crazy high prices. The guy that says, ha ha, all I need is one person to buy my boat and I'm going to sell it for way more than what the value of the boat is. Watch out for that guy. They're out there and people are buying their boats. Now, if you've got the resources and you say, I'm going to get what I'm going to get, and I don't care. It's, it doesn't bother me if I pay an extra ten grand for this boat uh, because I'm going to get on the water and it's what I want and I can afford it financially, then that's fine. Uh, but just be, be aware of that's happening out there. Um, new boats, dealer inventory. If you find a new boat at a dealer, you're going to have to act quick. You're going to have to put money down. Um, but I'm going to talk about don't just take the boat when it comes. Don't expect a great deal, but most good dealers are saying, listen, I know at some point this person's going to want to trade this boat in, are going to want to sell it. And I think most dealers are being reasonable about taking profit now with the, with the demand being high and not gouging too much. So pay attention to that. Um, do your negotiation, even though you're not going to get the price that you would have two years ago, you're not going to get that level of discount. Um, you know, negotiate because the price that the salesperson gives you up front, there's still some room because they want to sell the boat versus the other salesman in the dealership. Because if, if they don't sell that boat, they don't get that commission. There's not a, another boat coming in for a while. So if you've got one, hey, do the best negotiation job that you can, but know that they've got the power. Um, custom ordering a boat, they're definitely going to be 2022s. I think soon you're going to start seeing 2023s being the model that you order. So um, later next month, August, you'll start seeing the 2022s coming out. Um, August of 2022, you'll see the 2023s coming out. And I think in the not too distant future, we'll probably hit that level um, and, uh, some manufacturers, uh, are not locking in the price with the dealers until they kind of see what happens with all the, the shipping container surcharge that's going on, uh, with the supply chain, with their cost of materials so that they can decide, okay, how much, how much can we sell this boat for and still make our reasonable profit? So if that's the case, 
just be careful. Get things in writing. Understand exactly the way your dealer, your manufacturer is handling price at this moment in time. So if you want a boat, buy a boat. Don't expect a great deal. Inspect, negotiate, 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 pull the trigger. And when I say inspect, especially new boats right now, um, new boats have always had some flaws when they come in the nature of the handmade nature of the boats that are built today watch other videos on the channel about new problems with new boats and i go into detail of it because the labor force is diminished the skilled labor force is very very hard to come by uh, manufacturers are having uh, roundtable discussions with all of their competitors saying what can we do about this we can't find skilled labor to build our boats so they're hiring what they can to meet the demand and they're shoving boats out the door, the quality control down boats that show up at dealers are having more issues than ever. So when your new boat comes in, or if you're buying a new boat, put that boat on the water and run it, go through it with the fine tooth comb, find out everything that's not right with that boat because the dealer may or may not have done that. The better dealers will, um, the medium dealers are going to miss some things. The lower level dealers um, are going to just ship it out the door and, and just say, here you go. Find that stuff before you make that final payment. Sign on the dotted line. Um, find it. Put it in writing. Find out how they're going to address it, if they can address it. Um, and when it's going to be done, try to get a timetable so that you don't get caught in a bad situation. Again, we talk about that in the First Time Boat Buyer Academy, um, firsttimeboatbuyer.com. We go into more detail. Um, once you buy the boat, build your skills. Maintain the boat properly. I've got a video coming out, um, things I wish every boater knew. Um, talked to some technicians the other day. And they said the biggest problem is people don't understand exactly how to maintain their boats and they let it go for, you know, year, two years, three years at a time. And then they've got a $5,000 repair bill and they, they say boating's expensive. Uh, it's a hole in the water you throw money into. If you stay up with that, you can avoid that. Make your memories. Um, if you need some help building the skills, if you don't have total control of your boat, um, check out the best boat captain on the water training. It is awesome. The the comments I get from people are blown away. There's a pontoon edition. There's a single um, a bow rider fiberglass edition. I'm doing a coastal edition and a twin edition coming up soon. So go check that out. Um, but that's how you're going to get the most out of it. Build those skills, learn how your boat operates and get good at operating it, trailering it, dockering it, tying it up, pulling water sports, all of that stuff. Maintain your boat, read your manuals, find out what maintenance is required at what levels and do it, do it right, do it with a skilled person and then make memories. That's why you're buying a boat. It's not a financial investment. Um, it is a relationship family investment, relaxation, health and well-being investment. Make those memories, use it, have some fun, and, and you'll love it. Let's pull up the anchor and run this podcast back to the dock. We'll be back again with another helpful and fun episode next time. If you'd like to be a guest on the podcast, visit BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash guest, and I'll help offer insights into your boat research and shopping experience. Also, We'd appreciate it if you took just two minutes to rate and review this podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. It helps others find us so we can help more boaters. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it in your boating groups on social media. They will certainly thank you. And by the way, if you haven't already, grab your free Boat Buyers Secret Weapon Toolkit at BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. And so you don't pay too much for your next boat, visit BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash save for a short video. Now, before we go, I want to leave you with a few first-time boating tips for when you own your new boat. Number one, know your local boating laws, basic navigation rules, and how to operate your boat safely. It'll make boating even more fun for everyone. Two, be aware of your wake at all times and pay attention to no wake zones because you are responsible for your wake. When maneuvering at slow speeds, you can put out an enormous wake. If going slow, be courteous, save some fuel, and drop down to idle speed just in forward gear to ensure there is no wake. 
This could save you an expensive ticket and will keep you from being that guy on your waterway. Number three, boats do not have headlights. They have docking lights specifically made for seeing in tight quarters and docking. Do not turn your docking lights on while cruising down the water. It can blind other boaters and is very dangerous and, again, could save you an expensive ticket. Number four, follow the maintenance schedule for your boat. Change the oil, impeller, gear loop, winterize if you need to winterize in your area. Inspect your trailer tires, bearings, and grease the hubs if you're a trailer boater to ensure you don't experience expensive and unnecessary repairs that will impact your boating time. Number five, always double check your plug is in, your battery is charged, and the fuel is full before heading out for a day on the water. It could just save your boating day. And if you're a trailer boater, I've got a few extra tips. Number one, at the boat ramp, prepare your boat your gear, and your guests in the staging area. Then when you're ready, back down the ramp, unload the boat, head to the parking lot, and right back down to your boat to be fast and courteous to your fellow boaters and don't tie up that ramp unnecessarily. Next, use transom tie-down straps when trailing your boat. Very bad things can happen if you don't, and they do happen. Three, Check everything in the boat is secure before heading down the road. Seat cushions, gear, keys, towels, even tubes and lily pads can get blown out when pulling your boat down the highway or interstate. And most important, have fun. Enjoy your boat and get on the water as much as possible because life truly is better on a boat. Until next time, this is your friend in boating, Captain Matt.